from Ponte's Books here with the chapter 27 historical tidbit for the Prince and the Pauper. Today's historical tidbit relates back to, in my opinion, one of the saddest moments in the story. And it has to do with two women who Edward meets while he's in prison with Miles Hendon because Miles, uh, you know, tried to hurt Hugh because Hugh didn't believe him or claimed he didn't believe him when he said that he was Miles Hendon. So now Edward was kind of just guilty by association and is doing some time in prison as well. He meets these two women and they have not so great of a fate. So today's historical tidbit is looking at heresy in Tudor England. So in The Prince and the Pauper, this chapter, the reference um, to these women kind of goes for a while. So I pulled a few pieces and it starts with a conversation between these women and Edward. He asked them why they were in prison. And when they said they were Baptists, he smiled and inquired, is that a crime to be shut up for in a prison? Now I grieve for I shall lose ye. They will not keep ye long for such a little thing. They did not answer and something in their faces made him uneasy. He said eagerly, you do not speak. Be good to me and tell me. There will be no other punishment. Prithee, tell me there is no fear of that. Then a little bit later in the chapter, uh, the conversation also goes on for a little while, but then eventually the women disappear and he's like, oh yay, they got out. And then a little later in the chapter, they're all brought outside and this part follows. In the center of the court stood two women chained to post. A glance showed the king that these were his good friends. So like I said, this is a sad moment in the story. Hopefully you've read the chapter uh, and this isn't a spoiler, but they do end up, these women are chained to a post because they're going to be burnt at the stake, which actually happens in this chapter. And you know, to make things even worse, while that's all happening, we realize that they have daughters who, you know, try and run out and be with them. Uh, and people have to physically hold back while this is happening to their mothers. So their crime that they were guilty of, although it didn't use this term specifically, is basically heresy. So that's what we're talking about today. So heresy in Tudor England. What is heresy? It is the belief, uh, a belief contrary to a particular religion. So in most places, especially modern day, that is not anything that is a crime. Um, you know, somebody believes a certain religion, someone else believes another religion that does not get an official title of heresy. That's just people believing different things. But when you have the government involved and you are comparing or you are measuring the way that certain people believe uh, against the way that the government tells them that they should believe, then things get a little trickier. So th throughout history, there's, there are quite a few examples of um, heretics and heresy and people being punished for that crime. So in Tudor England at this time, we've talked about in one of our previous videos, the official religion changed often. It went back and forth and back and forth between being Catholicism and Protestantism and back and forth a few times. So those who did not follow whatever the current religion was at the time were charged with typically both heresy and treason. So one, the other, both um, heresy was treated as a crime of treason as well because you were going against the state's religion so then you were therefore you were going against the state so you were going against the royals you were going against the government so as i said things went back and forth quite a lot so let's look at kind of how the specific tutors dealt with heresy so earlier in the tutor line we have henry the eighth and so during his time for a while, they followed the Catholic Church, and then he made the switch to the Church of England, or a Protestant religion, non-Catholic. Um, and during his reign, there were many people that were executed for heresy and treason. Quite a lot. 
Then we move on to Edward VI, his son. So this is obviously our character in our story. So historically, apparently there were only two executions for heresy. Now this is tricky because obviously in this fictional story, he's not technically the king uh, who's on the throne at this moment, but technically this is the reign of Edward VI. So I found it interesting that they had these two women who were uh, burned at the stake for heresy because technically that's the only ones we see in the story. Technically that's accurate to history. So then we move on to Mary the first, who's Edward's sister, Henry VIII's first child, his oldest uh, daughter. And she switches everything back to the Catholic church after she takes over as queen. So during her time, <coughs> she got a bit of a reputation for being brutal and being cruel. And one of those reasons is because she burned 283 people at the stake for heresy. So she uh, took the Catholic church very seriously and switching people back over to it. So she didn't mess around when people were going against her. She burned them at the stake. Then we have uh, the other sister, Elizabeth I. After Mary, she switched things back to Protestantism. So not Catholic, not Catholicism. And so supposedly she didn't believe in putting people to death for um, heresy. However, apparently there is a record of four Catholics being put to death as heretics. And then there were 250 Catholics that were executed for treason. So, uh, you know, she says one thing, but the data kind of looks a little different, I guess you could say. So... Over time, in different places and for different, you know, time periods, there have been a number of different punishments for heresy over time. Um, so in some places, you were sentenced to a pilgrimage, meaning basically you were banished. You were sent to, you know, you weren't killed, but you couldn't stay there anymore. Uh, there was whipping. Being burned at the stake is probably the most common one that we see, especially in Tudor England. Torture and you know, others as well. But those are the ones that kind of stand out in different time periods when people went against uh, the religion that people believed that they should be following. So that's a little bit about heresy in Tudor England. Hopefully you learned something. Have a good rest of your day.